Bonjour à tous, privyet konnichiwa, so welcome back again, my name is Jesse and in this one of tutorial, we're building a very simple machine learning web application called Verse Predictor, right, Bible Verse Predictor so it's going to predict whether a verse is from the Old Testament or from the New Testament which is very very simple, now let's see what I mean so let me paste in a test, so this test is from the New Testament, Philippines so I'll paste it here, then it's going to actually predict whether it's in the New Testament or it's in the Old Testament so predict it has finished predicting, so this was the test that was applied here. Yeah, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and application. So let's check. Wow, so it is in New Testament, and then the, it was able to give us the probability score, right? Which was one, which is quite interesting. That's why it is in New Testament. You can also check for the sentiment. The sentiment is a negative <laughs> sentiment because I think be careful for nothing. I don't know. Anyway, now let's try another test again. So let's use a different test from the Old Testament. Something like this, commit direct or to God and I, this verse, right? So commit direct or to the Lord and I thought it shall be established. So let's try that verse and see if it doesn't give us the right prediction. So let me paste it here. Then let's go with predict. Perfect, that's finished. So if you check for the verse, wow, it is in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, this verse is in the book of Proverbs. So able to predict why that it is in the Old Testament. Very, very interesting. Okay. Now, if you check with the sentiment, the zero, that is almost neutral. Okay, now that's what we're trying to do in this particular tutorial. Let's use a very simple verse that most people know, which is Jesus' word. Let's see whether it's able to predict a very small test in a Bible, whether it is in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. So, Jesus' word. So, let's try to see. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's in the New Testament. <laughs> it was able to predict this simple test. Jesus worked that it is in the New Testament. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. And the sentiment is zero. Wow. <laughs> no, it's neutral. Anyway, so now let's see what we put it. So, this is a very simple website, a very simple web application. It is also responsive. So, it's very, very responsive with the image and all of, all of these things. Very interesting. Very simple. Okay, now let's see how to put it. So, I'm just going to go to my folder. Let's stop our app for now, so that you can start up. So, we're using something very simple to create this particular app. So, uh, Python, Web Auto Gen, right? So, Web Auto Gen is a simple click tool that allows you to generate very simple website. Well, I like it for Express, for plugs, so it can be used to do something very simple, right? You can just create a project, a simple project with this particular tool, but that is Flux, Express, Iris. Now let's create a simple one. So it's going to be web Python web auto kit. Then the format is that we go with start by the name of the framework that you want to use. We are using Flux. Then the name of my app. So let's call it as let's say my Bible my Bible ML app, right? Something like that. Perfect. So that's already created, finished creating the project. So if I go back to my CD into my Bible keep up that's created simple stuff so app.py and then the template right now let's we have already closed this one right, so we can just run it from here so python app.py let's close up this that we are using for now because we are not using it then now let's open this our browser our URL here Perfect, right? So Flask Automate has finished. That's going to finish in a very simple, in a very nice format for us. Okay, perfect. So now let's see what we can do next. So I'll just open the folder. That is the folder that we created, which was my Bible app here, right? So I'll, inside here we have our template file, and there's nothing, there's something very simple here. Right? So the, that is the name of the project. So let's try it and change it to Bible Predictor. Tap up right, not Bible predictor, but Bible verse predictor. <laughs> I'm not predicting a Bible, I'm predicting a verse of the Bible. Bible verse predictor, and let's change this one. So if I save it and I run it back again, so it's going to change it, right? Bible verse predictor, very interesting. Now to save time, I'm just going to copy the other stuff, right? The other 
stuff to make it quite easy. Launch machine. Voila. Perfect. So that if I go back to here, oh, perfect. So this is something very simple. So this is just the boilerplate. These are just normal HTML, CSS, Bootstrap stuff. So it's not very, very. It's important, but it's not that important now. We want to concentrate on the backend side, right? So this is the code we did below. So you can just check it. So the most important thing here for this one is that we have a form, right? That we want to receive the test that we supplied. So the form is going with an, a method of post and an action of predict. Which, so we have to create a route for the predict, and then we have buttons. Right? We have the third button, reset to reset it, and then submit to submit it. Right? One for predict, one for clear. And then we have a required so that we don't send empty stuff. So let me make it double. We have our inside here, we have this one, right? Which we have already explained. It's very interesting, very simple. Now let's work on the back end. So here we have one index route for our home. We also have one route for our predict, right? Which is the one for the form. So we have to create those routes inside our app.py file. So let's work on it. So now let's see. So first of all, we need to be able to import some ML packages. So it's going to be our ML packages and our NLP packages. So ML packages. And then we need some NLP packages, right? So that's what to be working with. So before that, let's create our route, our first route, our second route. So this is going to be for our predict, which is going to the home. And we have another route called the predict for our predict. So here, here, then predict. Perfect. Right? Perfect. So this predict goes with the method of method is going to be of post and get. So get and then post. Oops, see what I'm doing. <laughs> method and then post. That's perfect. So that is something very simple. So we have our index file, we have our predict file. So if I go back and run it here again, perfect. Now we have our something very simple, right? Our best predictor, our home, and then we have our index file, right? Very simple. We have link to work on it very simple because we have to create the route. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is to add the machine learning aspect to this particular stuff. So you have to receive the test from here, from whatever we are typing here into this place right so to do that it's just going to be quite simple we'll be using the normal if main so if request dot method is equal to post right then if that's the case I want you to do something with it so I want you to just take my test let's go that's raw test it's going to be our request get form the brackets raw test so the raw test is coming from here let me expand it so that you see where the road test is coming from. The road test is coming from our form, right? Which is here. Instead of we have our road test here, which is very, very important, right? So, our road test, whatever we are typing, it will be bound to road test, send your post to predict, right? So, that is why we created a route for the predict here, the post method of post, and then the road test, right? That is very very interesting now from here that you're going to work on all the machine learning aspects from this point so it is from here we're going to do all the machine learning aspects so let's go to the ML aspect to be from here so let's go to the data the data we be putting our raw test inside something very simple an array right so let's send our test there so let's go to raw raw test is going to be raw test right so to show to display there, but to avoid confusion, let's make it quite simple with this stuff here. Right, raw test and then raw test. It is so that to we will avoid the confusion. But you know that this raw test is this one, and then these ones are new raw test. Right? You can also use the same test to still go to work because you didn't get the post. Perfect. And the next thing we need to work on the machine learning aspect. So let's try that one. So let's import all the ML packages so from sklearn dot import job link so import job link so we need job link to load our models right remember that our models are inside here so this is the models from the previous tutorial and then this is inside a static folder we have our images our materialized in our CSS 
then inside our images we have our images that we display then inside our js we have our js materialized stuff right okay it is very simple these are basic stuff the code will be below so let's import the machine learning aspect to do the current vectorizer so from sklearn dot feature extraction to be able to extract features from our test the test right import count vectorizer so count vectorizer sorry for the noise my name is it asks for the machine learning aspect and then from the test block we have from test block import test block so this is going to be for our sentiment analysis right so that is the only packages that you're using for now so we are importing flags this is a basic stuff this first route is going to be used for the other analysis now let's work on our machine learning aspect so we're we'll using pandas to to be able to load our data so inside here we have some data here which is the this particular data set so we want to load it we want to read it we want to do our transformation you can also work without it but let's add that one also so let's add that one as so import pandas as pd then from here we're just going to create something simple to load our data set so df go to pd.read csv then we go to our data inside data we have our k j have this are particular right k then after that this is going to work on our features right this is going to be our features so the features is going to be our first one for df this one dfx for our s features is going to be our df dot test right and df y going to be our df dot label this is just coming from the previous tutorial now let's vectorize them so we have to vectorize our stuff so this is going to be our vectorizer this is going to be quite simple so for the vectorization you're just going to use something like let's call that scopus or can give it any name but let's make it a scopus i like the name scopus anyway <laughs> then df x then the next thing we need is cscv for our current factorizer so with the factorization as i said that machine learning most often is deals with numbers right so we have to convert every test into numbers to vectors right that's how we need to vectorize them so we're using current vectorizer initialize current vectorizer to use it to convert the test into vectors to pass matrix vectors to numbers okay, so we are done with it then the next thing we need is we need to be able to vectorize whatever state that is coming. So S is going to be our CV test. Right. So what test are we trying to transform? We are trying to transform the particular test that is coming from the corpus. Perfect. So we are done with it. No, we are done with it. Perfect. So the next thing we need is that we need to be able to get uh, what do we call it. So let me put this one above so that we know that we are no more working with it. This at above here. The next thing we need to work on is we need to be able to get our machine learning model that we should train, right? So we're using joblib to import that particular model and use it. So let's call it as our naive our model. So naive. Oh boy. Naive model. Naive model. Naive base model. Sorry for the noise. So we open the file. We're going to our models folder from here right we have our models folder here then here we have our bible prediction nv underscore model dot picking then we need to read it we need to read bytes format so read bytes format okay, so we have been able to open our file now we can use that file to work on it. so let's go to classifier dot classifier right so job lib to dump it so we are not we are going to rather load it not dump it load it from this our naive base stuff okay, so now we can use this our classifier that you have created our model to be able to do our prediction which is going to be very very simple to work on it we need to do to vectorize the test again to vectorize data so it's going to be our vec then cv dot transform transform 
what are you transforming? You are transforming this data set that is coming here. Okay. That's what you are transforming. The one that we are, the person is typing. So I transform that data set and I convert it to arrays. So two array. Okay. So we have it in fifty in sparse matrix. Now we can apply our prediction. So my prediction is going to be my vectors, my classifier, a bit classifier dot predict. Then we we'll apply a vector on it. Okay, so whatever result that is going to come from here, we'll be sending that result to our test. So it's going to be my prediction. Let's go to my prediction. Right? So let's make this one prediction. This one is the one going to the other side. So let's save it. So it's very simple. So we are just going to receive the test, right? Then we're just going to load in our data sets to be able to vectorize our stuff here. Then we load in our model that we have created. And then we are going to predict it. So let's try on the sentiment aspect. So NLP aspect is going to be quite simple. The same format to be NLP test. Let's go to NLP test. The NLP test will be using test blocks. So test block. Then we pass in our data that we have. So let's pass in our raw test net, our raw test data. And let's create our test sentiment. So test sentiment is going to be our NLP test dot sentiment dot polarity. So we can send this test polarity to our another place. Or we can make it like this sentiment. Okay, really sometimes you can make it like this. Sometimes when you are doing like that, it may tell you that it's not defined, right? So we are looking at another variable. So test sentiment. So then we can send our test sentiment here. So our best sentiment, rather. Best sentiment is to best sentiment. So now we have our data set. Everything is working well. Hope I hope it's working well. So here we have our raw test. Let me reduce it so that you see what I mean. The raw test here, right, is coming from our raw data we are receiving here. By the one we are storing here. And then we have inside our result very simple we are just using a simple ginger template if look so if the prediction is equal to zero then give me a testament right if it is if it is prediction is one give me new testament right so you can actually change this one and then make it as buttons and put it as button so let me copy it and make it as buttons we made it buttons already so this is for the old testament and the probability score so let's work on the prediction score right so work on the prediction because it's going to be very simple we already have our prediction here. Right? So to create the prediction, so we're going to be predict score is going to be my CLF dot probability score. Right? So we're using probability score, so it's going to be our predict probability proba, right? Predict proba is going to give us the probability score of our particular vector that we have. So we send this predict store here. Great. Score is called to our prediction score. Good. So we have something simple. So we have our prediction score, we have our sentiments, we have our prediction itself. And then now, the next thing we need to do is that we need to be able to see. We have our count vectorizer. So this count vectorizer is supposed to be V, capital V. <laughs> so let's change from the top here. Just be like this, right? Perfect. Now well, let's run our app. So it's now working very well. We have all our functions working. Well, we have our results, our sentiments, the button. And then here there's no button here. So let's try this. But before we try this test, let's put in this. So then we just says what the very simple test. Let's press and see. So road test is not defined. Right, name road test 25. So I think I made a mistake here with the name. So I think road test not defined. This road test is referring to this, right? So that's the mistake I made. Consistent. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. To restart it so that we to work on it and see what I need to make. So Jesus wept. The reason I'm using that one is because it's simple. <laughs> That's why I'm using that. It's going to work. Perfect, it's working. Very nice.
So new testament, very very interesting. So we are going to work. So let's try another one. It's working very well. It's not that bad. Now let's add the images, right? So let's let me link the images to it. So that you know that we are going to work on it a bit. So I'm just going to change the image here. Perfect for this, and then let's do the same one for the other one. And then this one is let's say but for any image. Let's save it and then let's run it. If it's, so it's working very well, so we, it is we have to work perfectly in a very simple way. So that's how to create a very simple app. So the main idea behind this app is that first of all, you just need to these are just something very basic, right? These are the normal nav bar, which is normal materialized nav bar. The most important thing for the front end is the form, right? How to receive the test. So we just use a normal form with the post, the method of post and a prediction, a route of predict. Then we are receiving everything that we, we are we are binding everything you are typing the true test and then you're creating a button to send it. Then the result will be sent through road test back to show it to us. And then here we have a simple if loop. So if the prediction is going to zero, give me new testament. Else if it's one, give me old testament, right? The other way around, vice versa. And for the probability score, we just did the same simple stuff. And the sentiment also apply the same thing. So on our back, back end, we just created a simple flags, we just imported flags, and we initialized flags. Then we imported our machine learning aspect, our test block for sentiment analysis, we created our first route, and our second route for our prediction. Then we just load in our data set, we created a factorizer to vectorize our test, we loaded our model loaded our model and then we just applied our model on our prediction and our test blob start for our sentiment and we send them back to our content. So thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Stay blessed.